I'm going to show you how to plaster this wall using nothing more than sand and cement. Show you the whole process I'm going to show you exactly how to do it using two coats and like I said nothing more than sand and cement. So keep watching and stay tuned for the end of the video and I'll show you exactly what to do after this point. Before we start, always wet your walls in, whether it's block, brick, it doesn't matter, just always wet it in. I've just thrown a load of water on, and that's for two reasons. Render likes to stick to moisture, it doesn't like anything dry or dusty, so the water will not only help to give moisture to the blocks, but it'll also remove any dust that is on there, which means your render won't fall on the floor. <laughs> Another thing is, always sweep your floors before starting. We're going to drop this stuff, it's going to fall on the floor, that way you can just scoop it up throw it back on your hawk and start again. So really there's nothing to it. Load your hawk up. What you want to do is start pushing it on. When you're using it, apply your render, keep your hawk under. If anything falls, it'll just fall back onto your hawk. And just really squeeze it in. Push it into the wall. You want to make sure it's got a nice grip. So this is going to consist of two coats, this is a scratch coat, this is a base coat and what the mix is, it's four to one, four parts sand, one part cement and waterproofers and that's the mix we're going to be doing for the base and then we're going to drop it down for the next and I'll show you the next mix in the next part of the video, but again, really push it in. Like I said, when you are using it, just push it into the render and then trowel it into the cover board. Like I said, I'm just putting it on, pushing it in, and then you want to leave it. So once all the render's on, what we're going to do is uh, scratch it. But first, I'm going to give it a good rule, strain it off. So I'll show you that in a minute. This is my secret weapon by the way, it's my mixing bath. Get full two, two full loads in there, you get about 10 buckets of sand, two cement, it's an absolute beast. And this is what I use when I'm doing any cement, sand cement jobs, it's a brilliant little piece of kit. Keep your paddle in there, mix it when it's dry, perfect. So I've got a section on, you don't want to go too far ahead of yourself. Basically, this area's done, now you've got two options, you can leave it and just scratch it. Um, that's what a lot of people do, there's nothing wrong with that. But with my scratch cut, I just like to give it a little rule. Try and get it straight when you can really. Because when it comes to the top coat, we're going to really be focusing on getting it perfectly flat and straight. So I'm just going to give it a quick rule. Nothing crazy. Use your reel to flatten off. There's still some high spots in there, block work, so you are going to catch a few bits. There are a few roll plugs that made it past my vision. <laughs> but yeah, work both ways. One way, keep your fat where you can, put it back on where it's needed. I'm just going to try and get it flat. Cross. Top's still a bit wet, so just make sure it doesn't fall over. And just put it back on the wall. So anything you collect, this is a feather edge, this is a straight edge, this particular one is a feather edge. Anything you collect, you can put it back on again. It's fairly flat. When you level against it, your straight edge, these things too, it's pretty flat already. You know, we've done a lot of work at the beginning stage, so now the top coat should just fly on in fit. Right, so we've flattened it and I've just scratched it, unfortunately. <laughs> 
the GoPro messed up a little bit. So I've actually lost footage of me scratching this particular wall. So what I'm going to do is show you me scratching a wall from another video. The premise is the exact same. The only reason we put the scratch on is so when we put another layer of render on, which we are going to do in a minute, it's got something to grip to. It needs something to stick. If we just left it smooth, the top coat was just literally fall on the floor. So we put a scratch on just to allow the second coat of render to bind to that initial coat. So I'll show you a quick clip from a, another video, like I said. Um, this is the outside, it doesn't matter, the process is the exact same. All we're doing is allowing a mechanical key for the top coat. So I'll pass you on to that now. I'll show you how to do scratch coat. Don't go in too deep when you're scratching, just go on the surface. You want to apply some waves, that way top coat is going to stick firmly onto the scratch. So what happens is because you've got the waves, if it contracts, it'll buckle in to each shape. I mean you've got a stronger grip. And that's it. Then what we're going to do on this particular wall, is going to leave it to dry. You can come back the day after, that's what one way you can do it, you can wait for this completely dry. What I'm going to do is wait a few hours, let it take up a little bit and then I'm going to put the top coat on the same day. In my eyes that means it's a stronger all-in-one uniformed slab of render because they've kind of dried at similar stages. So I like to do internally, I like to put both coats on the same day. So like I said, I'll watch you Scratch this, I'm going to clean all my tools up, do some other bits of my house, and then come back to do the top coat. Okay, so it's been about three hours. The, the render, sorry, is burned up. It's still a bit damp, which means you don't have to wet it in. This is one of the perks to doing it on the same day. You don't have to then keep wetting it in. It's still quite damp. We've got a good key, and this means that we can just go straight onto it. So I've got the new mix ready. I'm gonna do it the way you should do it. I'm gonna work right to left. That's what the same rendering you should be doing. But what I'm gonna do before, I'm just gonna check how the wall is to plumb. And my aim is to get it flat, straight, plumb and level. So I'm gonna have a quick look now at the level and see what we're dealing with. Okay, let's work it on. Right to left. Let's dig it. Tie into the scratch, really push it in. And it's gripping nicely. You can just feel it pull into the scratch there, which is quite nice. The mix for this, this is five to one. Five parts sand, one part cement. And I've also bought half compound of liming. Lime is to give it a bit of breathability, a bit of flexibility, and um, it allows the wall to breathe a little bit, which is always good. You want this, you want a bit of a bit of that in your mix. So and it's just lovely to work with. So I definitely recommend lime. So it's five to one with some lime in. Again, it's nothing far from what we were doing before. Put it on. Watch out for the plug sockets. I swept the floors. So when I do drop some, I can pick it back up. All we're doing is just pulling it on. Nice tight application, really pushing into that scratch. You'll find as well you've got a bit more time because the scratch coat is quite damp, you've still got a bit more time to work with the render, so it's quite nice doing it on the same day. You don't really want a stiff mix when you're rendering. You don't want it too wet either, but you do want it quite, you want it a bit of moisture in there. Because when you're putting it on, the worst thing is if it's too dry, it's heavy to use, it's hard to flatten. 
and you'll just find that if it's too stiff you won't be applying a render in a flat manner it'll be clumpy and you'll just struggle to get it flat where if there's a bit of moisture to it it just glides on lovely to use and it just wants to be worked where if it's too stiff you'll just find it's hard work so you want it not wet but you want it quite runny in terms of render at least So again, we're just working right to left, keeping a hawk underneath the trowel at all times. Give it a little flatten with the trowel, but again, don't play with the render. You want it to be firm, you want it to stay on there, and you need to let it dry and take up a little bit. If you play with the, the sand cement mix, what you'll do is you'll pull the moisture from the back, bring it to the front, and that's what we call when making a render go drummy because I ain't got a fix in the moisture is taken from the back end which means it won't be gripping to the scratch so when you put it on just leave it for a bit you will be tempted to play with it everyone does but don't just put it on that's why we use a rule it's that job to get it flat that's it you could put it on in clumps, it could be all over the place, but it doesn't matter because the rule is what you use to get the wall flat, it's not your trowel. It's never your trowel. It's always the rule. So what we're going to do is get this little section on. I'm going to rule it off and see what we're dealing with, how plumb we are, give it a flat and then just see whereabouts we're sitting on the wall. I do know this wall is ridiculously out of plumb, so we'll see how well, how well we can do. So I'll get this section on, we'll go from there. I do recommend before you even start rendering, is just give the wall, the block work, brick work, whatever lay you're working on, check it with your levels first. That's what I did before I started. I just checked the level and just see roughly what we're dealing with. You'll find usually if it's out of plumb, it's going to be top that's sagging in or elsewhere. You might have a, a dip in the middle of the wall. Just have a look before you start and you kind of know how to gauge the render. What is this top? The wall's leaning back, so the top end is pushing to the front a bit, which means the bottom, you want a bit more render than the top to make it plump. So I've tried to put that into account. Have a quick look. We're not doing too bad there, which we're actually really surprised with. I didn't think we'd get that. So what we're gonna do now is try and rule it flat, using the level as we go to get it perfect. Trusty feather edge again. Same process, nothing different, except this time you'll find it a lot easier. It's not going to be on the scratch coat, you get hit by a lot of the disturbed block work, some of it might have high spots. You're going to find this time really round, it's going to be beautiful, in theory. <laughs> so, I'm just going to go. It's such a straight away, it's smoother, it's nicer to work with, nothing's in the way. Now, like I said, I want to be pushing the top in, taking a bit more from the top because I've just checked the level. So I'm going to push in a bit more pressure on the front, on the top edge of the reel there. So what we're doing is just working top, working up and down, and we're working horizontally, vertically and horizontally, that's how you're, that's the best way you're going to get it straight. So it's a bit of a dip in the middle, work it. Anything, again, anything you take off, put it back on the wall. Okay, so I've got a low spot in that corner, I've got a low spot here. And what you want to do when you finish ruling, you'll notice areas that haven't been um, touched and ruled off, that means that it's low. So what we're going to do now is when we've ruled off and you can see clearly these sections haven't been touched, we put more render on. So that means we're packing them out and we're getting them ready to rule off again. So now I've ruled off, I'm going to put on the sections that are low. Just filling in the low spot. It's a big spot here. Just put your render on, 
Don't be smart. If anything, I put the render on proud. This saves constantly stop starting. When there's low spots, I put more render on than what I actually need. This way, when we're ruling off, you know you're going to have enough to cover it. The worst thing is to keep stop starting, stop starting. I want to fill in the low spots, rule them off and just do it twice max really. You, you will find it, you know, you will come back to it, but if you put thicker layers on a render, it just makes your life so much easier. So don't be, don't be clever about it, just whack it on. There we go. Now the other perk gives you something to play with, so when you're putting a bit more on than what you need, use a derby, push it in. Now you can use that to fill in the low spots again. Instead of keep getting your trowel, you can use your straight edge. What we did at first, you flatten it, you put a tilt on the feather edge. And now what we're doing is we're holding it completely straight to the wall. So what I'm doing is holding it flat. That way we're just going to get a complete straight edge. And that's when you know it's completely flat. So at the moment I'm just working horizontally. Take the render. This is the other good thing about having the bath. Derby straight into the bath. Straight off, no messing about. Beautiful. Okay, so back and now working across. See? Problem is now you've got a low spot at the bottom, so angle it in. Work it again. And what you find, you'll slowly start to get that wall flat. It is a, it's quite a skill to learn because at first it is, it's tough going, but. You do get the knack of it, it's just practice. So it's another good reason why you should really scratch. It just gives you more time to give it to learn how to rule off. What I'm gonna do now is just have a quick look on the old level, see where we're at. Okay, so I need to take a bit more off the top. That's fine. That ends nearly there, a bit more off the top again. See where we are here. Same. So, I'm not taking off at the top end. What I'm going to do, get the rule, scrape it off again. And then, fortunately, it's just trial and error. And now we know where the plumbing is, you know how to gauge it. We've got to scrape that top end off and then try and get it flat. Okay, we're pretty much there. Like I said before, when you are really not, it's your final section, put the straight edge straight flat to the wall, 90 degree. That's when you're gonna get your true line and find out how straight it actually is. So ruling up 90 degree, just taking the last last lumps away. Everything's flat, straight, run it up, straight to the top. Looking good. 
does take time, the first panel. But it does get easier and I'll tell you why in a minute. So that's that. I'm going to quickly check it for plumb now, see where we're at. Hopefully we're there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's probably a mill out, but to be honest, I'm okay with that. Same there. That one's bang on. So it's bang on there. Must admit, it's probably one mil at the top, but I'm happy with that. Otherwise, you're here all day. I'm chuffed with that. A good test as well is run it diagonally. Run your eye down it. Is it straight all the way through? Check your edges. Your internals are probably the most important sections to get straight and plumb. Because what happens when the walls meet? If you have a dip in the middle or if you have a belly, that's exactly where you'll see it. So if you're going to pay attention to any section, make sure it's for internal angles and make sure they bang on. Because that's where people look. As soon as you walk in the room, the first place your eye will go is to the corners. Like that. I'm actually just going to give it one more scrape. And then, I'm happy with that, I'm chuffed. Now the section section is easier. Now we've got a, plate, a section we can work from. We know this is plumb, we know this is flat, we know it's straight. Um, so now what you can do is when you're applying this part of the wall, you use this as your guide. So when you're ruling off, you literally just carry on, carry on from where you were, you know exactly how much to put on. Running that through, I know that I've not actually got that much to put on there, which says to me, the wall dips in towards that section. This is actually quite, quite fair. It's only a little bit of render to put on. So now you've got that done, the rest of it should be easy. So what I'm gonna do is put that section on, rule it off from what we've worked to, and then I'll show you what the next part is. I ran out of render with that much to do. How sad is that? The smallest amount. Now I've got to mix a little batch up. That just breaks my heart, that. <laughs> a little bit more mix and I would have done it. <laughs> right. Most of it's on anyway, guys. So I'm going to get that mix, put that tiny, useless, stupid corner on, and then we can carry on to the next bit. This is a devil's flow. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Basically, this is a float. All I've done, you just screw some screws to the top of it, roughly same distance apart. And then you want the tip showing just a little bit, enough to uh, make an indentation. And I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do with this little bad boy. So, as you can see, it's some nice squiggly lines on the wall. Now, it looks pretty. Is that the only reason we're doing it? No, there is a big thing, there's a big reason why we're using the float. What we're doing with this is we're putting a key in the wall ready for the finished plaster. So most people say, so why don't you just use a scratcher what you used before? But there's a reason we use this particular float as well. What we're doing is, by putting the screws in, we're also going to float the wall. So if any of any high spots in the render, we're going to rule them back. And then we're also going to fill in any low spots. So just like you do when you float a wall when you're rendering, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we've just put the screws in to give it a key at the same time. So it's two birds, one stone. So I'm going to show you exactly how you do it. You put the float flat to the render, and you literally just do figure of eight motions. And the figure of eight means that we're going to take back any high spots and fill in any low spots. So usually, you want to do it, the render's taken up a bit, so it's been about 40 minutes. Depending on the user, you might want to wait a bit longer, so it's really firm. And what you can do then is weigh it up. I don't mind floating it when it's still a bit wet. It's been 40 minutes. Touch. To the touch, it's still soft. But, to me, it's just a nice time to float it. But again, just play around with it. If you're doing it and it's too wet, and you find you're pulling the render off the wall, just wait a bit, wait for it to take up, and then try again. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with waiting a good hour and waiting for it to go it's quite firm. You can throw water on and do it that way as well. It doesn't matter, whichever way you find best. But the good thing about this is we're gonna float the wall 
as well as leave a key. So it's important because when we come to finish it, we've got a nice key to work with. So again, just be gentle, don't go crazy. Nice figure of eight motions. You've probably seen this before. Um, this is when you've taken off any top plaster, you might have seen this underneath in the scratch. This is what used to be done all the time. So it's multi-purpose, giving your key and flattening the wall. What I like to do along the straights is just run it flat down along that internal angle. Again, making sure that internal is completely straight. That's important. That's what I was going to look at. So flat, keep it flat and then run it down the wall. And then from there, go back. It's quite therapeutic doing it actually, it's quite nice. <laughs> Simple task, but very important. Again, keep your floor flat to the wall when you're doing it. And then you're just left with a nice, flat, rendered wall, ready for skimming. So what we're gonna do now, is gonna leave it a good few days at least to dry. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this wall with a nice, finished plaster. I'll see you in a few days. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a few days after. The render's cured nicely, completely solid, scratch is ready to go. Um, and now what you've got to do is apply a finished plaster to this. I'm not going to show you in this video how to do it because it's a long enough tutorial anyway, we'll budge in 30 minutes now. But what I recommend is you do sign up to the welcome course using the link below in the description. Uh, basically I'm going to show you exactly how to use finished plaster, I'm going to show you how to prepare your walls ready for plastering. I'm going to show you how, what you need to do to this before you can even start applying it. And I'm just going to show you the full process and how you can start using finished plaster to get this wall looking smooth, ready for painting. Um, I'll also show you which plasters to use, how to mix it, and the plastering tools I recommend that anyone should be getting for starting to get decent results in plastering. So this is for beginners, intermediate, anyone who's just serious about getting into the world of plastering. So the way it works is I send you daily email mails and with every email you get a tutorial, a video and it's got a new premise and all within the same aim of getting you to plaster. So like I said, sign up using the link below and I'll show you exactly what to do with this wall. But thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like the video. That lets YouTube know that it's a good video and it's, it creates, it lets them understand that it's decent. So if you did like it, please like it. And um, please subscribe to our channel. That's the lifeline of our uh, subscribers. That's what gets our views going. So if you want to watch more videos, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.